Okay, I'm going to take the most basic quadratic function, f of x equals x squared, or of course you could think of that as y equals x squared, and we're going to graph it. So let's make a little bit, a little chart over here. We'll pick some numbers for x, and I suggest you pick some positive and some negative numbers. So how about negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are four numbers. Remember, you could choose any numbers you want for x. And we want to know what x squared is, because this is y is x squared. So if x is negative 2, then y would be 4, negative 2 times negative 2. When it's negative 1, we would get 1. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and t squared is 4. So those are four points on this graph. So let's go over here and do that. We've got 0, 0. We have 1, 1. And let's see, we have 2, 4. And let's just see, what about if I did another one, 3? Three? 3, it would be up 9. So I'd go over 3, and it would be around here. So. And actually, you could write an equation for the axis of symmetry. What line is that? Well, that's the line that is the y-axis. And you remember what the equation of the y-axis is? It's x equals 0. So that's the equation for the axis of symmetry. Every parabola has an axis of symmetry. It also has what is called a vertex point, this place right here where it sort of changes. So notice on the left side it's kind of going down and that's where it changes. It starts curving upward and that point there is called the vertex of the parabola and in this case that's the ordered pair 0, 0. the function opens down like that, then we know for a fact that a had to have been less than zero. So when a is less than zero, the parabola is going to open down, always. And we can see here that the vertex is at the very top of that parabola. So the vertex will be a maximum. And we might be able to maximize profits or determine the maximum size of a garden with certain you know, restrictions and how much you can spend on fencing or whatever it is. We can now get a function. We can determine that it opens down so its vertex will be a maximum.
up in the air with some sideways motion, it falls back down in this shape. You've probably heard it called a parabola. The pull of gravity makes the ball go faster and faster. It makes the ball accelerate. Now, if I threw you up with the ball, ignoring air resistance, you would fall in the same path, despite your difference in mass. So to you, it would look like the ball were just floating next to you. That's the idea behind the vomit comet. The zero-g plane flies in the path that an object in free fall would follow. It's the same parabola. So now replace that ball with a plane, and you're both moving together. That is the path the plane follows during your segments of weightlessness, and that's what makes you feel like you're floating.